If you're new to the world of disc brakes, then here are some of the things that you should and shouldn't do to keep them working perfectly. They're no harder to maintain than rim brakes, but they are different. So first up, keep oil away from your rotors. Now, particularly when spraying aerosol lube on your rear derailleur and indeed when oiling your chain. If you do get oil on your rotors, then the brakes will work much, much less effectively. Now, if the contamination isn't too bad, then you will be able to ride your bike very carefully until the brakes work properly again. And that's because braking forces generate heat and that will burn the oil off. But if the contamination is really bad, then you're gonna to need to clean the rotor thoroughly and then either using a blowtorch, burn the oil off your pads, which apparently some people do, or probably more likely just simply replace the pads. So the simple thing in the first place is just not to contaminate it. So if you can't be accurate enough when you're spraying oil on, then just take the rear wheel out before you do it. Now this will be completely alien to rim brake users, but you mustn't repeatedly pull on the brake lever if there's no disc in. And that's because a disc brake system is self-adjusting. So that means that as the pads wear out, they'll move gradually ever so slightly closer to the disc, meaning that your brake feels exactly the same as the lever. So that's absolutely brilliant. But what it does mean is that if you repeatedly put on the lever when there's no disc in, that the pads will move further and further out until eventually the pistons could drop out and then that will drain the brake of oil and it won't work properly. So it's very simple to avoid, just take a few precautions when you're traveling. You can get little plastic adapters that fit inside the caliper and that'll stop the pads from compressing, a bit like a, a fake disc. But if you don't have those, then very simply, a business card wrapped around a small coin will also do the trick. The second thing to bear in mind when traveling with your bike is to take care of your rotors. Now, although they're pretty robust, much more so than a rear derailleur, for example, if they get a big enough whack, then they can bend. And because the tolerances of the disc caliper are so tight, if they do bend, then you'll either get brake rub, or even worse, you wouldn't actually be able to move your back wheel properly. But again, the way of avoiding this is really straightforward. Simply take your rotors off if you're flying with your bike, and if you're just packing your bike in your car, just be a little bit careful. You know that bit where you're trying to shut your boot and it doesn't quite go, so you just mm, lean on it. Don't do that. If you do experience disc rub, then firstly, you need to check to make sure that your wheel is in the dropout squarely, if you've got a traditional quick release. If that's not gonna fix it and you've still got a brake rub, then don't worry, it's still a very, very simple job to fix it. Simply take normally a five mil Allen key, and loosen these two bolts at the caliper here, enough that the caliper then moves freely. Once it's doing that, you pull the brake lever on and that will square the caliper against the disc and then while holding it on, then re-tighten the bolts and that should resolve your brake rub. If it doesn't, then you need to check the disc to make sure that it's still running straight. One of the undisputed advantages of disc brakes is their performance in poor conditions. And that refers to both the actual braking and also the maintenance, because hydraulics, unlike cables, take very little looking after in poor conditions. However, just like your car, they will need a little bit of TLC from time to time. Particularly, if the brake starts feeling spongy at the lever, that means you need to bleed the system a bit like the equivalent of changing your brake cables. Now, it's not all that hard to do, but you will need a specific bleed kit that is dedicated to the model of brakes that you've got on your bike. And also, just like rim brakes, you also, of course, need to keep an eye on pad wear. And you can generally get a pretty good idea by dropping the disc out and having a look at the inside of the caliper to see how much pad is left. So there you go, some simple things that you need to know about keeping your disc brakes in good condition. Keep lube away from the rotors, don't pull on the lever when there's no disc in place. Make sure you don't bend the rotor, particularly when you're traveling. Also, you've got to know when they're going to need a bit of TLC. And then finally, don't get frustrated if they rub. Just take a minute to sort it out. Now, if you want to watch another video about disc brakes, then you can see Dan and I testing them to their limits on the Col de Tourmalet. And yes, that is a chorizo sausage you can see up there. Probably better watch it and find out. Now, for more maintenance videos, you can get through to our playlist where they're all listed in one convenient spot just down there. And finally, before you go to either of those, do make sure that you've subscribed to GCN. If you haven't, you can do it by clicking on me right now. Nice.